Cower in fear, mortals. In my memory, no other symbol has as much mystery and mystique as the Earth Ride. It's supposed to be the heaviest symbol ever made, like thick as a granite table and just so offensively loud and aggressive that no one would ever actually want to use it in a band or project. <laughs> Put it this way, mate, they don't make them anymore. <laughs> but it's always been a bucket list symbol for me and one of the first ones I hunted down for the museum. Mate, I had to know how heavy they really were. But to appreciate how heavy this thing is, like, how heavy is a normal symbol? <laughs> Oh, oh, was that you? Oh I, oh, I know that smell. When a symbol is thinner, it's washier, i.e. like water splashing on the ground. Like that's great for a crash symbol. That old mate weighs 1300 grams. Now compared to my dark right, like it is bigger, but it weighs almost an extra kilogram. So notice that it tings more. But this isn't a heavy ride, it's more like a medium, like a lighter medium, which means you can still crash it. But what about the Earth Ride? It weighs 3,700 grams. That is 1.5 kilos more than the Dark Ride. Uh, safe to say that, mate, she doesn't crash very well. Okay, and now we ask, why? <laughs> well, it was the early 70s with a man named Billy Cobham, mate. He just played with the Mahavishu Orchestra, not a big deal. Oh, and some no-hit wonder named Miles Davis! He's currently 78 and he still tours. He's in a Drumio video, guys, and he is a beast. <laughs> So story goes, he went into Zildjian and said that he wanted a symbol with more power and projection. <laughs> Mr. Zildjian grabbed an unfinished symbol out of the factory, gave it a play, and it had a lot of the sounds he was looking for. And like usually symbols are hammered to give them their final shape, but Zildjian just pressed these. It's baby smooth. They trimmed it down the size and gave it a clean mate, you've got the earth ride. Like, the mystique comes from, I remember being on drum forums as a kid and people claimed that, oh, they're buried underground to get their look and sound. And mate, that's why they're called the Earthrite. That's where the name comes from. But nah, it was just the world's first ever raw unlaid symbol. But if you think we're done, mate, you owe me the apology. Because look, I got an actual first gen 70s one. These ones look the coolest in my opinion. No Zildjian logo on the front yet, it was too early. And it actually weighs a little bit less at three and a half kilos. But mate, I still have one more. We got a 70s one, we got a 90s one, but mate, here's my 80s one, and it is a monster. <laughs> This is a 22 inch brilliant finish earth ride. Like when it was new, it would have looked like a giant slab of gold as it's been buffed and polished, which got a lot of the muck off of it. And other symbol experts I've spoken to say that this is the model that you actually want. Boy, is it fun to carry around because it weighs four and a half kilograms. <laughs> It's just a giant slab of bronze! But somehow it's actually really musical. Like this is one that I actually enjoy using from time to time. And yes, it's good for blast beats. Well, being 
Gilda Blast makes sense, mate, because it's basically the first hardcore brutal symbol to ever be made. Metal as we know it was just getting started in the 70s, and sure, a modern Peisty Eclipse mega power ride is a little bit heavier, but that's a bigger symbol with that huge belt. That's a 24. Like, the Earth ride just looks normal until you pick it up and hurt your hand like I did. It's so cool to finally have these. And uh, I totally think its reputation is well-founded. I mean, today's modern symbols can rival this for like crazy thick, big pingy goodness. But back in the day, <laughs> there was nothing else like this. And uh, But I can also see why folks just spent their money elsewhere.